This video is designed to give a short introduction on Excel spreadsheets and some basic formulas using Excel. Right now, this matches the example in the beginning of Section 6 for our Math 123 Quantitative Reasoning course. Okay, so on my screen, I'm showing a budget spreadsheet. Uh, this person is very on top of their budget because they created a column for their estimated expenses, and then they went through and recorded their actual expenses. So all this spreadsheet really is, is it's a grid. It can help us organize information, especially numerical information. So as I initially look at this spreadsheet, uh, it's very organized, everything's very labeled, but there's more to the spreadsheet than, than what really meets the eye here. There's more going on underneath uh, what we're seeing on the surface. Okay, first, just some basic parts of any spreadsheet. Because it is laid out on a grid and we might have a lot of information, uh, we like to have a way to quickly designate where things are at. So you notice uh, over here on the left, I'll use my highlighter, uh, there are numbers. Those numbers correspond to rows that go horizontally across. And then there are letters at the top of each column, so columns going vertically down the screen. So rows are designated with the number, columns are designated with the letter. When you put those two things together, you get a cell reference, a cell address. So right now, I don't know how well you can see it on your screen, but cell G10 is the last thing that I clicked on in this spreadsheet. So there's a, a light green box around it to show it's selected, and its address is shown up here in the address bar clear off my mess here. Okay, also shown next to this cell address is the formula bar. And so what I said about there's more than meets the eye here, we see uh, 210 in cell G10 when we're looking at the spreadsheet, but what's actually in cell G10 is a formula. Someone has typed equal G8 minus G9. Well, G8 and G9 are also cells. Those would be the two cells directly above G10, right? And of course, they've been subtracted. So our person who made the budget spreadsheet has taken their total income minus their total expenses. And you might notice that this 210 is also in parentheses. Excel is trying to tell us this person had a deficit. They were short $210, right? They had $2,200 in income. Oh no, they, they spent $2,400. So in this case, they formatted Excel to show negatives as parentheses. You could also format it to show as red, but we knew your textbook would be in black and white, so we wanted to have a way for you to see that that was a negative value. Okay, there are some other cells in this spreadsheet where a formula has been used. For instance, uh, the total income, these total lines right here. The person did not type 2200 in this cell. Let's see what they actually typed. So if I click on cell B5, it tells me where I am up here. And we see that they've used a formula. In fact, if I click on that formula bar, it tells me any cells that were used in that formula. And they use the formula equal SUM parentheses B3 colon B4. So you may recall what the word sum means in math. Sum means total. Sum means add up the values, the answer to an addition problem. Okay, B3 colon B4. The colon is like with a ratio, the word 2, T-O, so B3, 2, B4. Okay, if I scroll down a little bit, same thing for the monthly expenses. They have found the total down here by using a sum function. So I'm going to redo that to show you what that, that looks like. So I'll just click on my formula bar and delete everything in there and hit enter. Okay, so now there's nothing in my formula bar. So what I would type, and actually I don't even have to type it in the formula bar. If you just click on the cell and start typing, it'll show up in your formula bar. So equal, and as I start to type the word sum, a whole list of possible pre-made Excel functions pop up. Okay, I just want sum. I can either double click on this 
or I can continue to type, I need to put a parenthesis after sum because I need to tell it what do I want a sum of. Now I could type numbers here and Excel would add up those numbers for me. I want to again use cell references. So the first value I want in this sum is B8. And I could type B8, comma B9, but it would take me a long time to type all those individual cells. So again, that colon tells it through what cells I want. And notice I didn't even capitalize B22 here, but Excel knew what I was talking about. It very helpfully highlights everything um, that is currently in our function to let me know, are these the cells you want to use? And I close my parentheses and hit enter, and it calculates automatically for me. You could also do equal sum parentheses, and you could use your mouse to highlight the values you want if it's more difficult for you to type and find all the values. Okay, you may have noticed as I was affecting this cell, the cell over here in F9 was also affected. That's because in F9, they have simply used a cell reference. In cell F9, the user has said, hey, take anything that's down there in B23 for the total and copy it on up here. And they just used a very simple Excel formula, equal B23, and that just copies whatever value is in cell B23 up to that cell. So they didn't have to redo the sum all over again. They just moved it to a different place in the spreadsheet. Okay, so we've seen our first Excel function, sum. We've also seen that we can make our own Excel equations. So here they just used a minus sign. So Excel understands all the basic mathematical things like plus, minus, divide, times, exponent. It understands all those things as well. So you don't always have to use a special Excel function. Just as long as you put in equals, uh, Excel will know that you want to do some kind of calculation. If you forget to type the equals, you're just going to get text in the cell. So there, I subtracted those two cells again. Uh, we've also formatted this very nicely. Since this was all dollars, uh, they've highlighted the cells. And if you have your home tab in Excel open, this area uh, gives us some number formatting. So in this case, if you either click on the dollar sign or you select accounting, it will show the values as, as money. So I'll give an example down here. So if I type 100 in this cell, right now Excel just says it's a general, that it's not really sure what to do with it. I could specifically tell it it's a number if I needed to. I could tell it it's currency, this is money. I can also adjust, maybe I want to show more or less decimal places. Uh, maybe I want to show it as a percent, although as a percent, 100 times 100 would be 100 percent, 10,000. Um, and sometimes Excel does things that's annoying, like you try to type in a date. Some of you may have experienced this before. Uh, you try to type something like this, and Excel assumes it's a date. You can fix that by saying, Excel, it's not a date, it's a number. Say, let's try that again. Um, to, to get it to change those. So there's all kinds of formatting. You can also make borders um, with this tool, put different borders around your cells, and you can also add colors and highlighting. And just like anything in, in Microsoft products, you can change the text type uh, just to make your spreadsheets a little more exciting. Okay, my recommendation is that you open up Excel, play with it, try some formulas uh, to get used to using it. I hope you find this helpful.